Okay, excellent. All right, so I hope everyone is doing well within your space and time. Uh, this is Tony Vortex, and today's going to be an interesting podcast. Um, we're just going to get straight into it in a moment. I'm going to go over some particulars here, just so we all could be on the same page. But we are, without a doubt, hopefully in this process, uh, most of you all end up finding uh, this material helpful and that you can power up your personal spaces. So before we even begin, I hope everyone's doing well within your space and time. Of course, I mentioned time. There's only 1,440 minutes in the day. No matter our belief system, we're not going to even get one minute more added to our life. So we need to use our time wisely. And I know all of you are doing absolutely fantastic, right? So fantastic. You're traveling the world. Everything is so relaxed. You know, you, you, you're you vibing in your own, uh, you could say you're in your own space and time per se. And this is the reason why I haven't seen some of you all's faces. I'm sure that's the reason why, right? But for everyone else who may be here, who may be experiencing certain challenges in life, no matter what they are, uh, hopefully some solutions can be gathered while we are here all today together. All right. So, all right. So I'm going to pull up some images here. Uh, and before we get into the meat of the show today, okay. So. Uh, first, let's go over the course of show today is dealing with, uh, overall dealing with astrology. Astrology is a tool. My way of doing it is a bit different than others. Uh, and this is actually based on some material that I actually created like five years ago and just pretty much shelved it. And you're going to learn about that momentarily here. Let's see here. I'm making sure we're all on the same page here. All right. Okay. Uh, so first, as we begin here, uh, got to go over the, the, some things here first. So if you haven't already, we, okay, so we're dealing with you all directly today. So we're dealing with the person or we could say the individual. But there, this is the below to the above. The, the above is the cosmos, okay? It's the universe itself, uh, the creator itself, its body, its energetic centers, okay? And so there's a book that we have on the website. It's called The Universal Conspiracy. I'm about to put it here so you can see it. All right. So it's called The Universal Conspiracy. It's an extremely popular book at this time, okay? It's... I knew so many of you all would like it that this is we also offer the free ebook of this book. Okay, you see it here, the Universal Conspiracy, the Return of the Lion King. Okay. This will answer, I would say, most of the questions people have about their origins, about the history or the cosmology of the universe, and so on and so forth. I am so confident in that that there's a paperback version, which is like twelve ninety five. It's not much, okay. And then there's the free ebook that you can go to the website right now and download for free. It doesn't cost you anything. You can't beat that, okay. So, in that uh, majority of people who have read this book said they have never read a book like this. It kept their attention from start to finish, and it gave them details that they were missing when it comes to our origins, okay? So many of you want to check this out. Again, it's called The Universal Conspiracy, Return of the Lion King, okay? It was released about a month ago. Mm -hmm. So let's continue on here. Okay. The next one that I think many of you all uh, who are health and wellness conscious, Let's see here. This one here is called the Herbal Apothecary. Okay, the Herbal Apothecary. 
This goes over all the herbs that the medicine center sells from A to Z. Okay, so all the 70 plus herbs or so that we have on the website, uh, this has all of them in it. It gets into the descriptions, uh, its uses, its benefits. It's a very easy read. It's more so a reference book, okay? Uh, if many of you all have been paying attention to our YouTube videos as of late. I've been on there going over each herb from A to Z, okay? I'm still going through it. I do about two to three a week, okay? So that's called the Herbal Apothecary. Let's see here what the next one is here. Okay. All right, so uh, just so you all know, you all right now, there is a summer sale going on. Again, we have to go through this, of course. You know, this is how we are here, right? We have to, uh, <laughs> you know, go through the, the typical things. So, uh, but the, uh, let me share my screen here. The summer sale has been going on for since about three weeks now. It ends next week, all right? The, the two books I named, are on sale as well on the website, okay? So if you are interested in any of the offerings we have, monatomic gold, magnetics, uh, diodes, uh, superhuman enhancements, and, of course, herbs and so forth, Practic most things are on sale. And, of course, many of the – we're going into astrology in a very specific way tonight, but we have many astrological – uh, charts on the website, many of them are on sale as well. So I really suggest many of you take it out because I think many of you could benefit from it. Okay. The last thing I'm going to share here, let's see, maybe the last thing, let me go back to my screen here. One moment. All right. Oh, yeah. I have to share this here. All right, so we have something here called the Book of You, okay? Some of you, many of you have the Book of You, but many of you don't or don't even know what it is, okay? So we have about probably 20 to 25 different types of astrological charts on the website that go over all different types of areas of your life, whether it be even securing yourself in a grid down kind of scenario uh, whether it be looking for uh, a job or employment uh, or just something you could tap into that would bring ultimate fulfillment to yourself. And when we get through tonight, going through the astrological things, you can see how accurate we are with what we do. OK, but we, the bundle, as you see on the website, the bundle costs pretty much over thirteen hundred dollars. All right. And it includes about seven or eight charts. If you want to potentially win it for free, okay, you see the the requirements there. You just have to do a one-minute video. If you are a supporter, if you do support us, uh, no matter how large or small, and you benefit from uh, what the medicine has, Dr. Dua Blair has taught, or myself, Tony Vortex, uh, do at least a one-minute video. It has to be one minute minimum. Uh, just saying just that, okay? And uh, the deadline is Friday, July 19th. After that, we're going to uh, go over those people who have, and the winner will win uh, over a $1,300 book of you, okay? There are many here who are part of this audience right now. We have 84 people on that have the book of them. And they could tell you themselves how beneficial it is. You can read reviews on the website and so on and so forth. Now, remember, this may not just be for you. You may say, I'm not interested, but this could be for your child. This could be for your cousin, your nephew, your niece, okay? Your uncle, your auntie, your mom, your dad, all right? So it's not just about us and always thinking about the, the, the I and selfishness and ego. It's not always about that. It's about others as well. And if more people tapped into that, the world around us would be absolutely different than what it is. So you see that there. So let's continue on. Uh, let me pull this up here. Uh, just a side note here. I'm just going to check just to make sure because sometimes we have some weird audio challenges. Uh, am I coming through loud and clear? Uh, just let me know in the, in the chat. Am I coming through loud and clear? Okay. 
Uh, lastly here, uh, we do have two events coming up. Um, one of them is the Superhuman 1 through 6 Revisited. Okay, uh, we did the Superhuman trainings going back about nine years now. Uh, and we don't, I don't do them anymore. Okay, so every once in a while, I would do a one day taking the most uh, pertinent topics of each of those trainings and doing it one day. Okay, and so that is July 13th. Okay, so uh, let me pull up the sheet here. Okay, good. Everybody said they could hear loud and clear. Shout out to everyone who is present. You are appreciated, without a doubt. And because of that appreciation, I'm going to power up you all today. All right? So just let me show you this last screen here, Sarah, so you can see this. All right. So, you know, just in case any of you all want to join. Now, it is out of stock on the website. So if you're seeing this here, because you all are on this podcast and you say, I want to attend this, uh, the cost is $250. You will be fed as well, though. So, but... Uh, if it's something you think you want to attend, then you have to give me a call ASAP so I know. All right. It is at the Meta Center. Okay. So, and we are located in Oak Lawn, Illinois. Our address is on the website. All right. So you see that there. All right. So now let's get into it, you all. All right. So I'm about to stop the share here for a moment. Okay. Okay, so for now, I'm going to pull this back up here. All right, so you should just see the image there. So, okay, what would I do? All right, so thank you for your patience there. I'm going to make sure I got all my screens up here so we could go over this in detail. Okay. Okay, so first we're going to start off about, number one, how can we be as strong as possible? And I'm sure this is going to make sense to all of you all. So when, in general, when we want to become more knowledgeable about a subject, what do we do? We read a book. We go to a class. We um uh, of course, you could go within, and of course, we could be, you know, get all new age and mystical with it. Yes, you could go within as well. But traditionally, people are going to read a book, watch a YouTube video, go to a class. You get what I'm saying? To learn a subject. So we know that, right? So if you want to become more knowledgeable, you go about the route to learn. If you want to become more fit, more muscular, right, what do you do? You work out. Okay, whether that be uh, in the gym, whether that be uh, doing exercises uh, in your home, walking around the block, going to uh, trails, hiking, whatever is your thing, we know without a doubt that if we want to become healthier in the sense of fitness and, and more muscular, stronger, and so forth, we have to work out, right? Working out at first for many people is uncomfortable at first. At times you feel pain, right? But in that pain, you gain, you become stronger, you become, uh, you lose weight, you become thinner uh, if that's your goal, uh, or you gain weight, okay? Uh, you, uh, which helps with stress in many other areas of our life, right? So that's without, we know this. Even if a person is lazy and does not do it, if you ask them that question, uh, how do you get fit? They would just pretty much say some form of what I just said. Now, when it comes to our spiritual lives, people tend to get all mystical with it and new agey, talking about meditating and things of this nature, but it doesn't really, for the most part, go past that. And what we see happening around us across the world. I'm talking about the not necessarily what has happened in the world to cause people to kind of be in the sunken place, but just observing the people themselves. Many people look defeated. Many people look stressed the heck out. Okay, and we, and we know this, right? Do you know what? 
counteracts that? It's active spiritual participation. Now, it doesn't mean when I say this, it does not mean literally that you have to come to the medicine. Okay? But you have to go somewhere. And you can't always do it via electronic means. Meaning through Zoom and stuff like we're doing right now, because you, because people we are, we can say humans, right? Now some people might call themselves gods and all kind of strange things, right? Let's let's keep it simple for this conversation, okay? Let's go back down to the foundational aspects of 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 the reality around us. We are humans, and most of us need constant human connection. Now, there are people who can go quite some time, like like I spend time in the mountains and all kind of stuff. And I can go quite a while without human connection and be okay. But majority of people cannot do that. I wouldn't even advise them to do that. Majority of the people that you see all around you, including majority of people on this line right now listening, need human connection. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that, right? But in the human connection, it has to be real human connection. It can't be superficial. It can't be everyone. You know, it's like people put on a facade when it comes some, you know, people who are, you know, especially in the Western culture and in the way the world has been going for the last few decades. People put on facades instead of being their true, authentic self from the start. But then once we get past that aspect where people have been around each other for a while and so their true authentic self can truly show, that's when the real connections really start. When's the last time any of you hung out with your friends? I mean, really hung out and went out somewhere and just had a good time and laughed like you you all did maybe 5, 10, 15 years ago. If you have friends who've who've been around you, or you've been around them for that long. So let's go back to spiritual connection. You have to go somewhere. If you want to build up, just like we talked about becoming more knowledgeable, just like we just talked about becoming exercising, becoming stronger, you have to actively participate and do those things. Well, to build up your spiritual body, your strength, your resolve, so you don't go into the sunken place, it does not mean that you're not going to feel stress. Okay, does that mean that? I feel stress at times, but it doesn't affect me like that. So I can feel the, the waxing and waning of the road around us. It just doesn't affect me like that. And that's because of constant spiritual practices, constant spiritual just exercises, right? Of course, at the medicine, we do these things, okay, on a regular basis. So every week, we have something going on where you could come. It, nine, 99% of it doesn't cost you anything, okay? And you could partake in meditating and things of this nature. But regardless if it's the medicine, regardless if, if it's your local coven, I know we have some witches here, okay, if that's where you get your, where you literally feel spiritually fulfilled, who am I to judge you with that? How dare I if I were to? If, as long as you're not doing anything foolish, causing harm to sovereign beings here, I don't have anything to say one way or another at this point, <laughs> seeing how what's happening around us, right? Uh, I don't care if it's a church. I don't care if it's a mosque. I don't care if it's a synagogue, a temple of some sort. Wherever you used to go to, because most people aren't doing any of these things anymore. The medicine, or you know, we do, uh, we're into data science. We always looking at the data. People, not only that, Many of you, as you travel all around the world, you calling us up. You're, you're feeding us the data. You're sending us pictures. You, you are letting us know what's taking place all the way from Zimbabwe to Angolia in, the, in many places in between. Okay? So listen, humans who are on this line, you are not alone. People all over the world are feeling very similar to what you are feeling, either <laughs> more so or a little bit less, but they, most people are somewhere feeling the same, okay? Now, with that, you have to actively participate 
in what feeds you. So using the Meta Center as an example, if coming to the Meta Center, you are able to relax. You are able to be spiritually fed, whether it be us in our conversations about metaphysics, whether it be meditating, whether it be the crystal meditation, whether it be just the one-on-one -on -one conversations that me and you all have with me. And we just talk about whatever's on your mind in deep detail, though, so you can release. You have to do these things. Regardless if it's with us, again, or whoever you do, whatever you, if you ever got that from anywhere. If you haven't, the medicine is here. But if you have got that from somewhere and you've been lacking from being actively participating in that, you have to do it if you want to become stronger spiritually. Or even just to be able to relax. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To ease some of that burden because you truly are being filled. You can't do it electronically all the time. Also, you have to, uh, how do I want to put this? Those places that you depend on, you have to be an active participant with those places. Okay? Let me all tell you a truth. Truly holistic places like the medicine. Now I'm talking about, I'm talking about like the medicine now because the medicine doesn't bombard you with thought forms. We're not, we don't have an agenda to get you into some weirdness. Okay. It's literally you come, we participate, we, we learn whatever we're learning about. Uh, we go on trips and stuff like that, but it's not trying to bring you into a cult or anything like that. Right. Uh, we are mainly an educational research place. So we, we study the minds. Many of you know these things, but for those who don't know. Right. But so I'm talking about true holistic places like that versus those who are metaphysical, but they have an agenda. The agenda may not be bad, but it may not be good either. When we talk about true and pure holistic places that do not have an agenda, there's not that many of them around. And, and it never has been. It never, it never has been. And these places are becoming less and less due to active participation or active support. Even the ones who have an agenda are, be, are becoming less and less. Think about it. Around your city, how many places you can go to and truly relax in the metaphysical, spiritual sense? I guarantee you, I, I travel from coast to coast, and many people who are part of medicine do as well. It's not many at all. And they're becoming less. So regardless if it's the medicine or your local, again, your local place that you get fed from, spiritually, if you're able to assist them, assist them in whatever way that you can. And par participate so you can become stronger spiritually. So let's move on from there. So next example and conversation before we get into the astrological. But before I even get into that, I'm about to, uh, you all are going to see a, uh, a poll on the screen here, okay? And this poll, I highly suggest because I'm only taking the top three, I'm only doing the top three astrological signs, okay? Even though there's 12, we're only going over uh, three. All right, so, uh, and it's going to be the top three. So let me get the poll set up here. But don't worry if we don't go over yours tonight because I'm going to give you details about what's, what I'm working on, all right? And so you'll eventually get access. Even if you, you know, we do offer free consultations. We, we, we've been doing that for about eight, nine years now. You can just book a free consultation, and we can go over the information anyway, that way. Okay, if you can't wait to, you know, what I'm working on to give to you all. All right, so here's the poll, you all. It's six questions. All right, it should pop up on your screen now. Please answer these questions before we move on. All right, uh, you should see a poll. Uh, you should see, a, if you look on your screen, everyone who's using Zoom, you should see a poll on the screen. It's six questions. If you can, answer those questions there. Uh, the sign that has the most uh, answers 
the top three I'm going to do, all right? I'm going to get into detail, and you all going to see how one can power up through this. All right, I'm going to give you all another moment here. Yep, get those questions in. All right, you should be able to hear me again now. Okay, so um, we're going to give it one more moment here. All right, so again, I'm taking the top three here. Let's see. Okay, let's see here. Okay, so I'm about to end the poll now. All right, and the top three. It looks like one more person is going through it. Let's see here. Okay, I'm about to end it now. Okay, so the top three signs that are here in today's call. Okay, we have we have a lot of Leos, which is the fifth house. We're going to do that one first. So Leo is number one. Okay, the fourth house, which is Cancer, which is from June 21st to the 22nd, is number two. Right, I had to get another pin, you all. Let's see here. All right, so Cancer is number two, and number three is going to be. Okay, the next one's going to be. This look like the second house. Okay, the second house is Taurus. Okay, April twentieth to May twentieth. Okay. So the third one is going to be Taurus, the second house. And so those who have these three birthdays, you're going to power up. But again, if we're not going over your sign, no worries. We offer free consultations on the website. Okay, you can, you can book a free consultation. If this is what you want to go over, we can go over it directly for you. Okay. So, all right. Now, going to the other questions here, we can see here. Uh, what is your greatest challenge currently? And, and it's as expected. All right. So, uh, so most most were let's say financial money related. Uh, the next question was uh, number three. If I were to ask you, are you in the sunken place? <laughs> and I know it's kind of put it out there a certain way. Now, majority of people said, no, they're not in the sunken place. A few people said yes. Uh, I think there's many more yeses than no's. And it's not me ragging on you or anything like that. I deal with people all the time, okay? I deal with, uh, you know, many of you know, over the years, there's been thousands of consultations uh, for men and women and young and old. And I know people at this point, all right? And so many more are there and some of these might not realize it. But it's okay. So uh, one person says, uh, well, here's the next question. Do you feel ashamed? For whatever reason. Most say no. But the answer to that for most is actually yes. And if you want me to get into that, I will get into why. All right. And so, uh, okay. So the Medicine Center has many resources, tools, and techniques that may help. Have you reached out to us concerning the ongoings of your world? And uh, most said yes. Uh, there's a decent portion that said no, so I suggest that you do. We all we have a lot of free resources. If that's if it's money is the issue, don't let it be the issue. Uh, and so, okay, so let's get back here. Okay, give me one moment here, everyone. And so we're going to go over in detail. Um, and let's see here. Uh, shout out to Chris G. If he's on the line, Chris G. Many of you know. Many of you on the line have been to many of the medicine center events. I know many of you personally at this point. Uh, Chris G. Uh, we got a Chris G. and a Chris J. Okay, so this is Chris G. Many years ago, it's about four or five years ago now. We had an event where a portion of what you're going to see tonight, it was done back then. Okay. And but there was an issue where we had a technical issue where I was trying to share it so everybody can view it, uh, this astrological map or a uh, poster that you're going to see. And it just wouldn't work. Right. And so from that point till now, 
uh, it's been on Chris's, Chris G's mind, and it's been on my mind to share with him. And so it finally happened like two weeks ago or so, a week and a half ago. And so, and when it happened, based on his response to, again, it's been collecting dust all this, all this time, right? Uh, due to his response and, and, and the conversation that took place, I said, you know what? I think it's time for you all to have this as well. So what you're going to see tonight is actually a reference, an astro, it's from an astrological reference book and poster that I've created that eventually is going to be released. There's still a little fine tuning I have to do to the reference book itself, but it's very straightforward and you can literally look at it, go to the page of the sign and instantly power yourself up or instantly power someone else up. Okay, so with that being said, all right, so let's let's get into it here. All right. So first we're going to start with Leo. Okay. Uh, some of the terms and things I'm going to explain what those terms mean for those who may not be astrologically astute. Again, astrology is not something that even I would say to believe in. It's just a tool. Do you believe in your hammer? Do you believe in your computer? Do you sit back and you know believe it, right? I, I would say in most cases, that, that thought process probably has not ever crossed your mind. Well, it's the same thing. People, unfortunately, and it's very interesting that people do that, they they want to believe in something so so bad that they believe in anything and everything. And it's it's interesting. So so with that, uh it's a tool. And it's a it could be a very accurate tool. As above, so below. If you want the above, I suggest you get the book, The Universal Conspiracy, Return of the Lion King. That's the above. Okay. This is the below. This is what's happening in, uh, on Earth to us directly and how we relate to the cosmos. Okay? So the first sign was Leo. Okay? Leo is a fire sign, right? Its characteristics are energetic, passionate, enthusiastic, and assertive. It doesn't mean that every Leo is exactly this way, but most of this is going to resonate. And after I get through, I, I want your honest, I do Leo, each one, those of you all Leos, when I get through, I want you to honestly let me know if it was accurate or not, okay? So characteristics, again, uh, energetic, passionate, enthusiastic, and assertive. Associated with action, creativity, courage, and leadership. Some of the challenges that Leos can suffer from, it can be impulsive, aggressive, and quick-tempered. In the modalities, now just so you know, a modality describe how the signs express their energy and approach life. Each element contains one of each modality leading to a balanced distribution of qualities. I'm about to share my, I'm going to change the screen here to the poster. Now I'm reading from my reference book, okay, that eventually will be released on the website. But I'm going to share the poster here as well because we're going to go over it. Um, uh, if, if any questions or comments come to your mind as we are going through all of this, please, for now, I did mute everyone's line for now, uh, type them in the chat room. Uh, and I will get to them during the Q&A. All right. During the Q&A, you are welcome to actually unmute your phone at that point. But I want to make sure that we are uninterrupted so you can get the information that you can utilize now to benefit your life and those around you. Okay? So uh, I'm about to share something else here. Where is it at? Okay. All right, one moment here, y'all. Okay, so here's the poster here. You all should see it on the screen here now. Again, it's, it's quite it's a quite large. It's so large at the moment that 
it will end up taking up like uh, your bedroom wall. It will, if I were to print it up in this current version, it would take up your whole wall. That's actually how large this actually is, right? And so, so I'm zoomed in really far to so it's visible. All right, so. Okay, so of course, again, um, let me go back to what I was going to here. So Leo, of course, uh, again, is the fifth house, right? And so the fifth house, as you see here, is the house of creativity, okay? All right, so let's continue on here for now. So again, the modalities, Describe how the signs express their energy and approach life. Each element contains one of each modality, leading to a balanced distribution of qualities. So Leo is a fixed, okay? In the modalities, he's a fixed, or, or that sign is a fixed. I say he, but that sign is a fixed. It, to break that sign down even more, its characteristics are determined, stable, and resistant to change associated with persistence, loyalty, and consistency. Typically, Leos build and sustain what has been started. And again, in some of their challenges could be stubborn, inflexible, and resistant to change. Now, there are only three, just so you all know, there are only three modalities. It's cardinal, fixed, and mutable. And so all the signs are going to be one of those. OK, then there's the house types, OK, which deals with angular, succulent and cadent. OK. And so the Leo is a succulent, which is its characteristics. Again, this is breaking down a person's personality and their way of being all the way down. OK, because when we were born looking at it cosmically. So if you picture zoom out of the earth, right, like we are zooming into something, right, zoom out of the earth completely. And so you see the earth turn into a little dot and keep zooming out. You see all the planets and galaxies turn into little dots. Well, if we were to go above it all, picture above it all, it's broken down to sections. Okay. And those sections that is broken down into, so the whole is sliced up and these slices have certain attributes. Okay. Those are the houses. And depending upon which attribute or slice that you were in within your birth, okay, that is the attributes that one typically would have, okay? It's no different than uh, genetically, let's say, right? Uh, you're born from, in your family. They say, oh, you act just like your mom or you act just like your dad or you act just like Cousin Earl or whatever it may be, okay? It's the, as above, so below. It's the same thing taking place just on a much greater scale. Now, of course, Leo's the lion. Okay. It's, it's a masculine sign. It's day of the week is Sunday. So that's your special day. Okay. Typically, you find more Leos to be getting more on the masculine side in their attributes. Its special numbers are eight and nine. Its stone is ruby, gold. Its colors are gold and orange, sorry. Its metal is gold, and its attribute is exuberance, right? So now when it comes to, now how can you use this to power up, for example, right? So let's say like certain... If I was a Leo, I would schedule some of my best deals or those things that are important for me to accomplish on a Sunday. And I will even go even deeper and make it so that those days that I do it on land on some variation of eight and nine. So, for example, uh, it could be a four. OK, because four, two, two times four is eight. OK, so that's a that is within eight. But ideally, eight and nine. OK, I will wear rubies, whether it be a ruby earring, a pendant ring. OK, I would wear the colors of gold and or orange like colors. OK, the, uh, the the ring or the 
necklace or the earring that the ruby is in would be gold. Okay? You see? I, just so you all, again, this is not anything new. All right? This, this is information that's old as far as it has been collecting dust on our shelves. Right? And some people over the years have got consultations and they have got this information. And they 100% have powered up. I wouldn't be surprised if one of the people who powered up is on this line now that we don't we don't talk. OK, but I wouldn't be surprised if she's on the line. But with that, uh, and many people part of most know who I'm talking about. So uh, it, it is real and it works for real. OK, and it's not you, you don't have to believe in it. There's nothing to believe in. This is what you were born. It's like genetics. OK, uh, because of genetics, what they call when a person gets sick. Let's say mom or dad had diabetes, and they say that, you know, you're going to have diabetes, could be, which could be looked at as a curse, okay? It could be looked at as a sin that's being passed through through the family. But it doesn't mean you'll have it if you take care of yourself. You, you get what I'm saying? So some of the attributes, because not all the attributes for each sign are good. You know, each sign has their weaknesses we can call it as well their challenges and so just as there are on the low, on our personal scale uh things we get from our family that could be of our benefit like if your family is extremely athletic it's a very high chance that you're going to be athletic as well if if you are a tall man and if you are with a tall woman, then more than likely your children, whether it be a girl or boy, are going to be very tall too. More than likely taller than both of you all. It's just the way it works. It's very simple. Now, in some cases, yeah, you get the anomaly that doesn't happen like that. You have two parents who get the mom and dad, uh, both 6'2". So the, typically you would think the child of that, of that connection would be probably 6'6 six, six or above, easy. OK, maybe, even, you know, seven feet tall. That's those are the kind of unions that bring those kind of tall people. Right. Well, you may get a child that may be. Five foot one. OK, yeah, it can happen, but it's actually that would be the anomaly. So the same thing is with the cosmos in these slices is gifted certain attributes. And the more that we understand these attributes and we work within these attributes, our life becomes easier. Again, this has nothing to do with belief system. You don't have to believe to be tall. If you come from, a, uh, let's say, a tall family, you don't have to believe to be athletic. If you come from an athletic family, if you come from a family of singers, you don't have to believe to be a singer. It's just naturally in you, but it's up to you to train and or adhere to those qualities to really bring it out as strong as possible. I mean, does that make sense? Let me know if this makes sense to you all. You know, I, I want to make sure I make it sense to you all, okay? Let me know in the chat room if I'm making sense, please. Okay, excellent. Okay, so let's continue on. So continue on with Leo. Uh, some of Leo's now, I'm going back and forth between, this is the poster we're looking at here on the screen now. So this is the poster that eventually is going to be on the website, okay? Uh, thanks to you all support. All right, I'm going to keep saying that because these things allow me to take the time to work on these kind of projects that are different than other projects for your benefit, okay? And so going deeper into Leo, creative, prideful, noble, generous, extravagant, egotistical, dramatic, powerful, opinionated, and can be romantic. Its opposite sign is an Aquarius. So what this typically means is that it doesn't mean that an Aquarius and a Leo are perfect together. It doesn't necessarily mean that, but they will find themselves always hovering around each other. Okay, you will find Aquariuses probably with Leos around them or Leos with Aquariuses around that person. Okay. If if we were to give Leo a keyword that summarizes its energy, it's I will. Okay. So, of course, it's a fire sign here. 
which is outgoing, spontaneous, egotistical, selfish, optimistic, quick temper, energetic, passionate, impulsive, warm, creative, arrogant, impatient. Its modality is fixed. And again, modality is the, it describes how a sign expresses their energy and approach to life, okay? It's fixed, so stable, stubborn, inflexible, solid, purposeful, shows self-restraint, diligent, determined, persistent, confident, conservative, and maintaining. Its house is succulent. Again, the houses in this, in this sense are divided into three categories based on their position relative to the angles. Okay, and that's this uh, ascendant, descendant, midheaven, and so forth, okay? And so, and again, that's on, a, on your birth chart kind of thing, okay? So dependable, stubborn, slow to change, patient, focus on stability and future, resist change, okay? Mm -hmm. And, of course, its planetary body is the sun, and the sun's attributes, okay, is uh, outward self-identity, personality, social self, vibrance, ego, willpower, consciousness, life force, creativity, individuality, and its energy is vitality. It's a, a very, it's a very uh, enhancing kind of energy. Okay. Overall, the energy. I'm going back to my reference book here. Again, the reference book. Is very detailed, okay, extremely, okay? and so, um, so with that, when it comes to Leo, it the energy of the fifth house, okay. So this is going back up to the house itself. Each house, so let's go back up to the house so you all can see this here. So of course, each house has an attribute, right? So each house has an attribute, okay. It does not mean that because Leos come from the house, let's say, of creativity, okay? It doesn't mean all these other houses can't be creative. They could be extremely creative. It's just that this is the specialty of their house, okay? It's the specialty of their house. Like, for example, let's take the house of career, for example, which is the 10th house. Those are the Capricorns. Uh, just saying this. So they're, they're the house of career. Those who are born under that sign tend to be very career-focused. It's just the nature of their house. Now, it doesn't mean that all these other houses could be extremely career-focused, too. They could be even more into their career in general than the Capricorn in the 10th house. But this house specializes in that. That's their thing, okay? So each house has their thing. You see, like the house of communication, the third house, which is Gemini. Okay? This gets really, really deep, y'all. Really deep. So I want to make sure there's nothing else I want to say here about Leo right now. Again, if, if, for the Leos, if there's any questions or anything like that that come up for you, uh, type them out in the chat room for now and, uh, and or just wait till I open the lines up. It's up to you. So how should a Leo overall operate? if one is born under that sign of the fifth house. Use your charisma and leadership skills to take center stage in any venture or career path. That doesn't mean do it out of ego. But because the downfall or the weakness of the Leo is that they can be egotistical. You need to be careful. You need to make sure that you strengthen your spiritual side to be aware of that. But if you're not doing it out of ego and you're doing it out of knowledge and understanding, you will be an extremely powerful force mm -hmm. and, and be viable in whatever you do. To increase your finances, pursue careers in entertainment, management, or public relations. Invest in ventures where you can showcase your creativity and leadership, such as personal branding, or with luxury goods. This is an example. It doesn't have to be those. This is, this, we could go over hundreds of different examples, okay? 
the best way for you to dress, for example, is regal, attention grabbing, showcasing your inner royalty. Now, again, again, this is if you want to truly harness your energy of your house then you will be the best that you can be for your house and what's destined for your house, you will also receive. And anybody who's part of your house will also receive what I'm talking about. Some clothing tips. Choose bold colors like gold and purple and luxurious fabrics. Wear jewelry like gold jewelry, as I mentioned, such as a lion pendant or a sun-shaped necklace. You're not pray, you're not worshiping the sun. You dig what I'm saying? This is easy. That's taking it too far because you don't have to do that. It's just a symbol of your house, and you're proud to show it. You see what I'm saying? You see the difference there? See, when you start worshiping and believing, that's when it gets into the, the gets into the negative spiritual things, the sin, the demonic things. It's not meant, it's just a tool. It's not meant for that. It's like somebody were to give you a dollar or give you a hundred dollars, and all of a sudden you start bending down and worshiping the hundred dollars. No, you don't. Of course you don't do that. But people do it every day, though, in different ways. That's what brings forth the negative energy forms. When you don't have to, the medicine is here. Like I said, this information people been getting from the medicine in free consultations and paid consultations too. They just longer and quicker. But this is that. So now we're going to move on for now. We're going to go to cancer. Okay? We're going to go to cancer. All right. So cancer is the fourth house, of course. It's the house, as you see there, the house of home. Okay? Cancer's would be in many cases not only obsessed with having a place they can call home, but making a place home if it's not that way. You get what I'm saying? Now, there is something called a cusp. If, we, if you're on a cusp and you, you share energies, not only with the house you're in, but also with the next house. So if you see my pointer on the screen here, for example, Let's say this is over the period of that month of your sign, but you are on a few days where it goes into the next sign. So maybe about three or so days or so on both ends, okay? So coming into the sign and leaving the sign, if you land in some of those days, you're on a cusp. So you share energy with that next sign or that previous sign, okay? So let's get into. Get into cancer here. So cancer is a water sign, okay? Its characteristics are emotional, intuitive, nurturing, and empathetic. It's associated with emotion, subconscious, intuition, and sensitivity. The challenges of Again, it's going to be going deeper and deeper into the science like we did before, right? Going deeper and deeper into it, hitting it from different angles. It's, it's elements, it's modalities, okay? It's house energies. And so it's, it's challenges that can be moody, secretive, and overly emotional. It's a, in the modalities, remember the modalities are cardinal, fixed, and mutable. Every sign has one of those. It's a cardinal. So its characteristics are initiators, leaders, and pioneers associated with beginning, action, and taking charge. Its role, they start things and set plans in motion. Their challenges can be controlling, impatient, and overbearing. It's house type, again, the house types are angular, sucking it, 
and cadent is angular, okay? Its characteristics are dynamic, initiating, and powerful. These houses represent the most visible and active areas of life where energy and action are most important or most potent, that's right, not most important, most potent. Associated with personal identity, home and family, partnerships and career. Now, of course, the energy of the fourth house, as we see here, the house of home, okay, is home, family, roots, and emotional foundation. That's extremely important to a cancer, okay? Extremely. One moment here. All right, so let's go down here a bit. Okay. Of course, Cancer is the crab. It's a feminine sign. Okay, feminine. Its day of the week is Monday. Its special numbers are three and seven. Its stone is pearl. Its colors are sea green and silver. Its metal is silver. And its keyword is loyalty. So again, with a Cancer, I would schedule my most important dealings on a Monday. And that's what I would do now. Someone would use that day to relax. But I've been doing this for about 27 years now, doing this astrology kind of stuff, right? And so with all the consultations and people who've got these types of consultations, it tends to be more of a day of action, their special day. So Monday, I would make sure it lands on three or seven or a multiple of three and seven, okay? Uh, I would wear pearls, especially a woman. I would wear the colors of sea green and or silver. I wouldn't wear gold jewelry. I would wear silver jewelry. So if you have gold, I would take that off and wear silver instead because that's the metal of your house. It doesn't mean gold will cause you problems, but you want to be completely in tune with your house. If you are a disloyal person, you're going against your house. Your house is one of loyalty. So be loyal, but make sure that those around you are also loyal to you. You see, it goes both ways now. Deal with it and, and you will prosper. You will prosper, okay? And the medicine center wants you to prosper. Because why? Many of you heard me say that, right? Say what I'm going to say here. Is that it creates the feedback loop. If we can help you in your trying times. Now, we want things to be wonderful. There are people who come to the center. They're millionaires. They're millionaires from, you know, born into wealth. Everything's wonderful. They come just to have conversations and, and, and be a part of the research and other things that we do, right? And that's fine. That's perfectly fine. Fantastic. But then there are those who may be having certain challenges. We accept both. So we want you to not only be comfortable, but we want you to, if you do have challenges, to get past those challenges. Because if we are able to help you do that, and we're really good at what we do, that maybe you will create the feedback loop with us. Well, that means that you'll support us. As we supported you, you'll support us, which allows us to support other people, okay? Especially in times like these. Think about it. So, its attributes are emotional, receptive, generous, loyal, imaginative, sympathetic, contradictory, moody, intuitive, and family-oriented. So now, just so you all know, and this is part of the reason why it wasn't that I just created this years ago and put it on the shelf just to do it. It's because I was thinking about certain things because you all see how detailed this can be, right? And unfortunately, good people are abused and used all the time because the, the more negative entities, they see this kind of stuff and they love it because they dream and think of ways to 
is, again, it's a very psychopathic mindset to be on top of someone else, to take advantage of others, to, to, so you can look at them, so, so they can be the popular one, all kind of strange stuff, right? And so because of that, to protect you, to protect you, there's so much, we have tons of stuff. We got, I got stuff that goes a thousand times deeper than this, even though this is deep. But I have to be careful what I release. Because even though you would benefit, but the, the, those people who are good or those people who have good intentions overall, so like that, they tend to look at these things and they tend to kind of look at it a little bit. They tend to use a little bit of it. But for the most part, most of those types of people who really should be using it are more relaxed with it, where the evil ones, they go hard. That's the one thing about them that's, that's very interesting about evil and, and the type of entities that are deep within the new age communities and just in every community, but new age communities, stuff like that, is that they study day and night to take advantage of people. They don't sleep. So I have to be careful because this will give them all the information they need on you, on all of us, not just you, but all of us, right? So the key word for, okay, so its opposite sign is Capricorn. Okay, so Cancer's opposite sign of, Cap of Capricorn. So Capricorns will probably find themselves around Cancers a lot. Cancers will probably find themselves around Capricorns a lot. This doesn't mean you're supposed to marry one or anything like that, but it's just the nature of things, right? You all attract each other like magnets. The, uh, the Cancer's uh, keyword, if we were to summarize everything, is I feel. Okay? Again, it's a water sign. We got into that already. OK, uh, emotional imp can be impractical, intuitive, creative, dramatic, deep, sensitive, secretive, depressed, empathetic, unbalanced, supportive, psychic, sympathetic, compassionate. It's cardinal. OK, initiators, ambitious, controlling, self-starters, assertive, pioneering, leaders, enterprising, enthusiastic. Active and dominant. It's a it's house's angler, which is the house of taking action, ambitious, restless, self motivated, active lifestyle, leaders, self starters, and impatient. And its planet is the moon, which deals with instinct, subconscious, emotions, intuition, childhood, inner personality, intimate self, primal energy, and receptivity cycles. And of course, emotions. Okay, so now with cancer, the best way for a cancer to operate is to capitalize on your nurturing and intuitive nature to create financially supportive environments. Okay, to increase your finances, invest in home-based businesses, which is where your energy is strong at, real estate or the hospitality industry, because all that's like homey. So you'll do very well naturally in those kind of places because you are, your house is one of home, okay? Consider roles in caregiving, counseling, or any field that provides emotional support, but be careful not to be drained, cancer, okay? Best way to dress, soft and nurturing with a focus on comfort. Here are some clothing tips. Opt for soft fabrics and soothing colors like white, silver, pastels. Comfortable, homey attire works well. What kind of jewelry should you wear? Moonstone or pearls to connect with their ruling moon. A charm bracelet with family symbols or a heart-shaped pendant because all of that means it brings the connection of home. And what, and what is home? Home is family. That's what home is. It's family, right? But be careful. Don't try to make a family where there's no family to be one at. That's the thing about it. You got to be careful because you know, each sign can go, it can go in ways that it really shouldn't be. I know a lot of cancers personally that they tend to, they want to make homes with people, places, or things that are not the home types. And so they end up, what does that do for those types? With cancer, when cancer does that, what does it do? It stresses them out. It makes their life agitated. It depresses them. Uh, 
uh, cancers. Well, first off, both. Uh, so we did Leo first. Leo's. How accurate was yours? Cancers. How accurate was yours? Okay. Tell me the accuracy. And we're about to do Taurus next. Yep. So all of you saying how uh, how accurate this was, right? Okay. So some of you all are doing yourselves disservice, right? If I say, have you been to a medicine or event? And you say no. Like, what? You haven't? <laughs> you have, have you booked a consultation to go over just you? Because the consultations are about you, about your life. You know, so it's not about me. You know so have you done anything? If the answer is no, it makes me scratch my head. Like, that's strange. You know, it's a little odd. So the next one here is Taurus. All right, Taurus, you're next. So Taurus or Tauruses are earth signs. Their characteristics are practical, grounded, reliable, and patient. They're associated with material concerns, stability, work ethic, and realism. Their challenges can be because they're stubborn, they can be materialistic, and overly cautious. Okay. Now, Tauruses are part of the second house. Okay, so let's go over there real quick. The second house. Okay, so the second house is the house of possessions. So naturally, Tauruses are materialistic. Okay, materialistic does not mean a bad thing. This is not, again, I'm not here to hurt you or to rag on you, okay? So, but they are the house of possessions of accumulating material things. That's what they are really, really good at, okay? So, again, money, material gain, possessions, income and finances, money management, comforts, material goals, perceptions about wealth, monetary influences. It's the bull, of course. Taurus is the bull. Maybe in some of those countries with those deep-rooted cultural practices where they kill the bull, even though it's deeper aspects. It could be bile, uh, B-A-A-L. There's many things going on. Uh, but if you are a Taurus and, and that is part of your culture, I would not be stabbing the bull, okay, on those bull runs and stuff like that, causing harm to the uh, to the caricature or the symbol of your house. It's a feminine energy. Its days are Friday. Its numbers are six and four. So again, follow the same routine, right? Uh, you plan your most important things on a Friday, ideally landing on six and four or, or the multiples of six and four. Uh, it's, uh, its stone is emerald. Its colors are pale blue and mauve. I might be pronouncing that wrong. Mauve, mauve. Um, its metal is copper. Its word is dependability. So in this case, if I was a Taurus, I would wear, of course, an emerald. It would be earrings uh, and real emerald. Make sure the stones that you get are real. Okay, if you're going to get pendants, stones, of your house, make sure it's 100% real. Don't don't get fake stuff. Okay, uh, you you want to bring honor to your house, and this goes deep. So any of you all who uh, who watch Game of Thrones or who know about uh, the old houses of this world that we literally live in, they're basing the houses, the structure of houses, like like the house of Windsor or the house of Rothschild or Rockefeller. They're basing it on all of this stuff. Even even military, military companies. <laughs> it, it, it goes deep, y'all. It goes deep, deep. All right. So, anyways, so if you if you just make sure that everything you do is what it is. So if you wear silver or gold, I would change that out with copper, because the the metal of your house is copper. You benefit from wearing that more than anyone else. So I will wear earrings or rings, 
pendants or chains that are made of it could be you know copper a copper chain could be really really nice looking it doesn't have to be the, the typical where you see kind of the new agers wearing where it could be you know wrapped nice it could look nice artistically but it doesn't look like how you would typically see a silver chain or a gold chain copper chains could look just like that no difference at all okay and so uh if you really want to bring forth the power of your house i would wear copper again uh i would have emeralds uh wearing emeralds of some sort i would wear the colors pale blue and my eyes there so it's opposite sign of scorpios so again here tauruses will find themselves around scorpio scorpios around tauruses okay uh it's it's keyword so when we, if we were to summarize its energy and put it into a keyword it's i have again it's the house of materialism okay so it's i have okay again it's an earth sign stable practical steady stubborn can be depressed determined stagnant patient unmotivated nurturing meticulous abundant cautious analytical its house is succulent dependable stubborn slow to change patient focuses on stability in the future resist change its modality is fixed stable stubborn inflexible solid purposeful so as you see tauruses could be extremely stubborn people that's, that's all throughout their chart stubborn 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 but also it's all throughout their chart is that they're very resistant they're very uh, uh driven and determined okay confident conservative and maintaining their their planet is venus just like libra's is so they like pleasure and relationships love emotional expression beauty sexuality affection friendship attraction indulgence and sensuality and venus is the, is the planet of pleasure okay so now i'm going to tell you what to do taurus is to power up one moment here let me go back to hmm. you see how large you see how i got to kind of move because this thing is so large all right so the house is there so tauruses Okay, of course, again, you are the house, the second house, which is the uh, house of material possessions, values, and self-worth. Even your, your, the Taurus is derived from the Latin word for bull, representing strength and reliability, okay? So, pull it back up here. So, now pay attention, Taurus. This is for you to power up. Utilize your reliability and practical approach to build stable and sustainable financial foundations. To increase your finances, invest in tangible assets like real estate, Engage in long-term savings plans or start a business in a, the luxury goods or food industries. Now, all of us could do that yet, yeah, right? Yes. But the House of Taurus specializes in, in these kind of things, okay? The best way for you to dress elegant and comfortable with a touch of luxury. Clothing tips. Choose earth tones like green and brown and fabrics like silk and cashmere focus on classic timeless pieces don't run off don't run for the, all the new stuff you know so go more for those things that are resilient and true versus the a fad if you want to harness the power of your house now of course i can help you with that this is what i do but if you just take note okay your jewelry, again, natural gemstones, such as emeralds or jade. Jade is another one you can use. Uh, the standard one is emerald. And emeralds come in various colors. So that kind of, you know, these things can be broken down further and further and further to get 
extremely precise. Sometimes the preciseness, though, is not good. Okay? Sometimes it's really good because you could cut through reality like a hot knife through butter. But it just depends. Okay? So, again, natural gemstones such as emeralds and jade and accessories made of copper or wood. A bracelet with a grounding stone like hematite. Okay? So, so now let's move on to, I'm about to open up the lines here in a moment, and I'm going to, any questions you all have, I'm going to read if there's any in the comments, or you can just come live and we can have a conversation. But there's something that we have at the Meta Center called the Omni Mind. I'm going to share the screen here so you can see this. And I'm going to get into, come on, you're only going to hit us from me one time now. After this, and you probably won't hear from me again, okay? So just be aware of this. There are many people here. I, there's a technology or technologies that we're working on at the Meta Center. And we announced publicly the Omni Mine about four months ago now. And it was said on podcasts and on various occasions on the website as well that it can change your life. And if you are a member, like some of you are members, you can get OmniMind sessions for free and or at a very reduced cost. Now, some people, like some people, people's lives are changing to the point where some people pay full price anyway. They come in and pay full price even though they don't have to. Of course, we appreciate it. Again, it creates the feedback loop. It helps with the research. But let me show you all something here in one moment here. Because there's some deadlines and things that you all need to know of. Let's see here. So I'm about to share my screen here. So this is the Omni Mind. This is, you can find this on the website. All right. And what the Omni Mind does is it can do many, many different things. The technology that we created and we're still working on. Right. But think of it like this. This is the basics of it. Many people, due to environmental factors due to family structure and so forth have more of a glass half empty look at life. So for example, this is not necessarily a conscious act. It's a subconscious thing. So this is a routine in their brain, in their mind that's running and it creates circumstances where let's say for example, they go out to eat and they're eating, and somebody at another table keeps looking at them. And they jump to, in their mind, that this is a racist thing or something like that, okay? So they tend to take, because the subconscious is creating this, right? And so then their conscious mind reaffirms what they subconsciously feel. And so, for example, another example, they're walking out the door of a restaurant or wherever, and they're walking right behind the person, but the person doesn't hold the door from the slams on them, right? For them, it, it, they internalize it. See, this is what, what's happening in people's minds, okay? I'm trying to explain it in the most simple way that I can, okay? This is what's happening in a lot of people's minds. And they're, they are unaware of it. And so when that person, when that door slams on that person, it becomes where it's expected because they don't really expect anything better for themselves, per se. Now, if you actively were to ask them directly to their conscious mind, do they expect better? Of course they would say yes. This is a subconscious routine or program running without the conscious mind being aware of. Well, with the omni mind, with the research that we're doing, we're able to be able to map your your brain activity, right? And in doing so, we can over time help to train it to be glass full than half empty. So to give you those same examples again, now you're at the restaurant, you're eating, but instead of somebody looking at you and subconsciously feeling some type of negative thing from it, races or whatever, okay? They're looking at you and you just smile back, right? 
you, you get up to pay for your food, your food is already paid for. So instead of negative, random, negative situations taking place, now we switch it and it's positive. Okay? And what happens with people who are in a negative state, especially those like born into poverty or, again, negative environmental factors, which, which doesn't mean poverty at all, okay? There's many people who are born into what you may call wealth who have very negative experiences, okay? They tend to then project that outward. These negative experiences are projected from their subconscious every day of their life. But what if we could project from your subconscious positive things every day of your life? What that does, just like the negative reinforces the negative, the positive reinforces the positive. There's a case study we're doing right now with one of the members right now. What's what's happening in this brother's life is literally something out of a TV movie. Literally. And you all eventually are going to hear about it. But this is the thing, though. This leads to the deadlines. Because we are, well, before I even get to the deadlines, let me backtrack a little bit more. One of the things we're also doing at the Meta Center is people who have uh, lost mobility, whether it be legs, whether it be hands, arms, they used to use it perfectly fine, but maybe an accident happened. Uh, if something happened, maybe even genetically, that they lost filling in that limb, okay? We are doing research to help them gain some filling back in that, those limbs, and that's through the OmniMind, Okay. So with that, because so many people are getting it now, see, once they get it one time, most of them get it more than once at that point. So especially depending upon what we're working on. So because of that, we almost have enough data to go into phase two. Phase two is probably going to start around September 1st. At that point in time, there will be no more new clients, at least for the immediate future when it comes to OmniMind. Okay, but those people who have been getting services, you are still will be getting your OmniMind sessions, but we're just not going to be taking any more new ones at that point in time. So we can focus 100 percent on you because, you know, again, we're getting more equipment in. We're, this is this is really deep cutting edge research that we're doing. So I suggest if you haven't got an OmniMind session, I suggest that if you are not really in tune with what we're doing in the science field. I really would say maybe you should, you know, become tuned tuned in, okay, even just from the knowledge perspective to know what's happening around you, all right? So as of September 1st, no more new clients with OmniMind, except those, there is some, except those who, again, have uh, lost mobility. We're still going to accept those people. But other than that, no new clients just for the other OmniMind uh, reasons, okay? Uh, what else here? Uh, what else? It was something else as well. Uh, all right, so that's it for now. I'm about to unmute you all so that we can have a conversation if need be. So bear with me one moment here. All right. Okay, so. All right, first come, first serve. So uh, whoever uh, you can. If you choose to, you can unmute yourself. If you have any questions or comments. Good evening, Tony. Um, I just want to um, thank you for having this um, webinar. And um, could you tell me a little bit more about how I could go about um, getting um, participation in? Um, the Omni Mind that you just spoke about? Uh, you can just go to the website and book a session on the website. All right, so it, it's open to book. You can book, you'll see the different uh, options there. And actually, we can go to it now. We go to it together on the website so you all can see it. One moment here. All right, so we go to the Medicine website. And we got almost 100 people on here, y'all. Okay, we got a full house. So uh, I take it many people found the information to be uh, worthy 
of their attention, and that's what I'm talking about. All right, so we we on the medicine website, right? The only authorized one from Dr. Deville Blair, and so we could just type in Omni, and it'll come up. This is whether you're on browser or computer itself, and so you uh, bring up Omni Mind here, as you see. All right, so uh, you go click on schedule your session today, and some of the attributes, for example, self healing and conscious wellness intention. This requires a consultation, though, in a bioanalyzer before booking, okay? Deep relaxation, focus, manifestation. Okay, <laughs> this is doing amazing things. At this point, it's so amazing that it's even got somewhat dangerous, not in a negative way, dangerous in a very positive way, but still an element of danger just because with great power becomes great responsibility. And so I have to be very careful for anyone who will get this. So this, this, there's a required consultation with this, and I'm still – so there are two people who are doing it and doing very well in life. And, again, those are the case studies that you all will hear about down the road, okay? Uh, and so memory retention, creativity, enhanced empathy for those who may literally be psychopaths or sociopaths, okay? They could benefit from this. Uh, grounding, grief release for those who have uh, grieving challenges, okay? Uh, astral projections or OBEs, remote viewing, which we call, requires a consultation. It enhances that dramatically. Uh, clairvoyance and psionics, this deals with psychic abilities. Again, it requires a consultation. And I'm very strict on who I'm bringing into, especially manifestation, remote viewing, clairvoyance.